What door am I behind? Number one, two, or three? Pick one of the numbers. And the answer is, I'm behind the camera. I thought this would be a fun introduction into a video about Knives Out until I realized it is the worst intro I have ever created. <laughs> so uh, try and enjoy the rest of the video. Hello, my name is Pavel. Welcome back to my channel. Welcome back to a video that I'm so fucking excited to make. Today, I'm going to be watching the second Knives Out movie that I've been looking forward to for so long. Before I go watch the second movie, I'm going to speak about the first one for a little bit. Because whenever I watched this movie in 2019 for the first time, whenever it came out, I did not expect to like this movie, but it absolutely fucking blew me away. My general opinion towards murder mysteries before kind of like 2019 were they're just boring. There's nothing to them. It's the same sort of shit. And you don't really leave the movie feeling satisfied until Knives Out came out. And this movie changed everything for me. I watched this and I was so hooked. I was so invested in every single character. I was so invested in the story. I was invested in the mystery and it was so satisfying at the end. If you have not seen the first Knives Out, definitely go watch it because it is absolutely incredible. Recently, I watched a video by Cinema Sticks and in that video, they spoke about Hitchcock's attitudes towards the mystery genre. And his attitudes were, were that they were just very depthless movies with uh, very uh, very little information about characters. And there was no depth to the movie. It was just more sort of like an intellectual process of trying to just figure out who it was. And that's all mystery movies were to him. And he just found them very boring and just did not like them. And the mystery has no particular appeal to me, merely because it's, uh, it is a fact of mystifying an audience. In the video, Cinema Sticks speaks about how Knives Out changed that. It gave us so much information. It made us care about the character so much. It gave us so much food for thought. It could have been absolutely anyone. There was so much attention to detail. All the characters, all the cast were incredible. And usually in the movie, when, whenever I see a cast that is absolutely incredible, I do not have high hopes because I'm like, okay, they're compensating for something by having an incredible cast, but no, this movie has an incredible cast and an incredible story. Therefore, I am so excited to watch the second uh, Knives Out movie. It's called Glass Onion, a uh, Knives Out mystery, and I have no idea what it's about. I watched one teaser trailer and I do not remember it because it came out like months and months ago. So let me speak about my expectations for this movie before we go watch it. My expectations are that this is going to be very clever. There's going to be so many layers. There's going to be a lot of depth to the characters. And I think I think this is kind of like set on a yacht or something like that or, or somewhere sunny so i feel like it's going to be because the first knives out was a little bit more dark and i feel like this is going to be more of like a bright uh murder mystery which i'm so excited for i don't even know who dies i'm just i'm so excited i'm so excited like so excited <laughs> ever since the first one came out i have been dying for a sequel and everybody that has not seen this movie i always recommend it to them like if somebody's like what should i watch i'm like hey have you seen knives out and they're like no and i'm like watch it and then they watch it and they love it so if you haven't seen knives out go watch it. And I've been trying so hard to avoid spoilers for this movie because I've, I've seen like posts and I'm just trying to avoid it because I want to watch it as soon as possible because if I get it spoiled, if I get it ruined on me, I'm going to be so fucking sad. And this is going to be a spoiler free review. I just thought I would let you know as well in case you're kind of like terrified I'm going to ruin everything for you. I haven't ruined the first one in this uh, video, so I definitely will not uh, room glass onion for you <laughs> and also I haven't been able to see this movie in the cinema because the closest cinema to us was like an hour and a half away that was showing this and it broke my heart because I'm I just really I really 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 want to watch it and that's what I'm going to do so I'm going to stop talking I'm going to watch glass onion and I'm going to review it and I'm so excited and I'll talk to you after so see you then <laughs> Ooh, my phone is falling already hello 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 I have finally watched Glass Onion. I recorded all that stuff in the morning and it is currently almost 10 p.m. and I have finally watched Glass Onion. And I'm sorry I'm recording on my phone. My camera is just literally too shit to fucking record on um, when it's this dark. So it's not gonna work. But anyway, I fucking love that. I'm also painting my nails purple. I really like them. Anyway, I love Knives Out. I hope there's gonna be so many movies of this because that was so, so, so good. I wrote down so many notes on uh, my phone like i have to had to message them to myself but anyway i'm gonna get through them because i feel like there's so much to say i'm not gonna spoil anything but anyway the first thing i've done is that i'm gonna have to re-watch this there was so much information that i didn't miss out on but i feel like the more you re-watch it and when you know the intentions of all the characters i feel like you're gonna get again a completely different perspective of um this movie i feel like this movie had a perfect balance between a like, comedy and seriousness and revenge and social commentary and there was so much social commentary in this and it worked. There was an absolute perfect balance. It worked so well. And I'm not sure if I prefer the first one or the second one more because they, they were absolutely different. The first one was super dark and super like, 
I, I, I would want to say like more realistic than the second one, but then the second one was like super bright and over the top and so clever and had so many layers, uh, not an onion pun. And I think it was absolutely perfect that I went into this movie knowing nothing because I feel like this is a movie that when, when you know less, when you know less about what's actually going to happen or the story, the better. And there were so many times I was like, oh, if I had this kind of spoiled or if I saw this in a trailer, it would really annoy me. So seeing like one teaser trailer that was like 30 seconds long was absolutely perfect. So if you haven't seen it, do not watch anything. Even this review, turn it off right now and go watch it. Um, and I feel like the, the thing I mentioned earlier about having like loads of details about characters, this movie did that. It gave us so much, like there's literally... Like, this movie literally pokes at the idea of murder mysteries being, like, really vague and depthless. And it, like, really looks at, like, in, in like motivations and, like, why, reasons why people are doing things. And it builds characters so well. There's so much character development. And it makes sense why this movie is almost two and a half hours long. And those two and a half hours fly by so fast. And this movie makes so much sense in 2022 due to its kind of, like, uh, social and, uh, like, references... Uh, and, and like attitudes towards COVID and like just social reference and, and I feel like maybe that won't age super well compared to the first one but I feel like watching this in 2022 when this came out makes perfect sense and there's another note I have down a little bit later on this movie pokes fun at rich people and kind of like rich people having this like perception that they're excluded from all societal rules once COVID was happening and kind of seeing how like delusional they were and it really pokes fun at uh, rich people and it has like this uh, class commentary and it, like especially towards the end of the movie this is not a spoiler it just makes you feel so good that you're like fuck you and i i think it gave it gave this like weird empowerment towards the audience and i think that's incredible and i think the movie set out to do this and create this mystery alongside um this commentary and i think it did it so 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 well um there's also uh, ethan hawk he kind of like a, has a small feature in this which i love seeing and Bati batista batista i don't even know if i'm saying his name right is incredible in this he's so funny and as a character like the casting in this movie is great and i know i said it earlier but it's one of those movies that has a perfect lineup and it, it's a great movie i feel like that is so rare and i absolutely loved it and one thing is that rich people, I know I keep mentioning and talking about rich people and how stupid they are, rich people have some of the worst outfits I have ever seen in my life, like what the fuck, like they, they dress so bad and like it's really funny seeing like their perceptions on like rules and like everything that was happening, it's like hey all the stupid people have to wear masks but we don't, though. like we're like rich, we're exempt from all the all the societal rules and it's like we, we just need to make more money and I think it also highlighted that during the pandemic like the rich people made even more money and the poor got poor and the rich got richer and I think it highlights that and it's so weird and great that a murder mystery movie can do that and have that commentary within it. I feel like there's a lot more going on in the second movie compared to the first one like there's so many layers and layers and layers and i know i continuously keep saying layers and it's an onion and you know it all makes sense but there's so many stories there's so many timelines there's so many like motives and reasons behind every character and i don't know i thought that was so clever and like i cannot even put myself into the mind of having to write something like this like you have to be such a genius and ryan johnson i hope i'm saying his name right is a genius and I'm so excited for the future of Knives Out. If they can keep this kind of like level um, and standard up, then I will be watching these for the rest of my life if they keep coming out. <laughs> there was like one thing that I predicted, me and my girlfriend predicted in the movie, and it doesn't really ruin anything. So to the, like, th th this movie feels like it shouldn't work. Like some parts seem super obvious, but it gets away with it. It pulls it off and it, it, it works. And I think that's what's uh, like absolutely amazing about this movie and the ending i'm not going to spoil it but it felt good and i think that's how i'm out of breath i'm not even gonna lie i'm like i think that's everything i have to say i fucking loved it i don't know which one i like more i'm gonna have to rewatch it before i form an even better opinion but definitely go watch glass onion and knives out mystery it's on netflix you have no excuse definitely go watch it if you have access to netflix if you don't you know find it somewhere else if you know what i mean <laughs> anyway i think that's everything i have to say Sorry about the quality, but I just had to get it off my mind. I did not want to wait until tomorrow morning to like set up the camera, set up the microphone. I just wanted to talk, get it all off my chest. If, you, if you've seen uh, this movie, please tell me what you thought about it because I'd be so curious. And what did you prefer? What did you like? What did you not like? Don't spoil it in the comments if you do comment. And yeah, I'll see you in the next video. Thank you so much for watching and yeah, goodbye. <laughs>